813, welcome back into Queen City News. Now, take a look at that image that you see right there. That is a glimpse of history in the world of astronomy. This is the first picture of a black hole in the center of our Milky Way galaxy. And this is staggering. It's four million times more massive than the sun, the star at the center of our solar system. Now, this discovery could permanently change the way the general public looks at what's in the sky. Some big things happening, and here to give us meaning to this discovery, Josh, uh, Dr. Josh. Josh Caldwell is here as a Pegasus professor at the University of Central Florida and chairman of UVSC's physics department. Dr. Caldwell, good morning. Good morning. How are you? Doing great. Uh, this is an amazing discovery, and I think we're all kind of looking at, at nerding out about what this all means, but you were kind of telling us this is more of a technological advancement than really kind of scientific. Well, I, I don't want to downplay the scientific advancement, but we have known from various lines of evidence for some time that there is a supermassive black hole at the center of our galaxy. What we're now actually able to do is see it. And it may sound ironic to be able to see a black hole because the definition of a black hole is something that light cannot escape from. But there's a tremendous amount of radiation coming from the matter that is swirling around that black hole that is heated to very high temperatures and radiating a lot of energy, but it's a very, very concentrated small area. And so it's very difficult to image that. Everything you're seeing in this image is smaller than the orbit of Mercury, the, the closest planet to our sun, and it's 27,000 light years away. So it's a very, very uh, difficult thing to be able to image that. And in order to do it, uh, people had to literally create a telescope the size of the planet Earth by connecting telescopes all across the planet and having them act as a single unified telescope. Well, and that's a wow. feat in and of itself, just the collaborative effort to get this one picture. It is uh, an incredible technological accomplishment because each of those telescopes is collecting light from this uh, Sagittarius A star at the center of our galaxy and combining it in a way as though those telescopes were a single telescope measuring the light all at the same time. We're hearing different things about, uh, again, I know we're not discovering necessarily something new about the black hole itself. As you said, this is more of a technological advancement that we're celebrating here. But when we talk about the black hole, we're hearing people say this is a gentle giant. What does that mean? Is it because it's not behaving as erratically as other black holes we've studied? Well, it's a giant because, as you mentioned, it's four million times the mass of our own sun. Uh, and uh, gentle, I think, is to sort of uh, try to dispel the notion that black holes are these dangerous vacuum cleaners zooming around the universe, sucking up everything in their uh, reach. Um, the material around it is, is heated up, and that's what's producing the light that we see there from the accretion disk around the black hole. Uh, but our black hole at the center of the Milky Way, compared to the one at uh, M87 that was previously observed by the Event Horizon Telescope Collaboration, is relatively gentle. It's not as uh, um, producing as much energy uh, as some of these other supermassive black holes. It's a relatively quiet environment around it. Um, so, you know, I think it's uh, just meant to not not cast these black holes as terrifying monsters of the cosmos, mm -hmm. but uh, our, our friendly anchors at the center of the galaxy. Yeah, I, I wanted to ask, because you, you mentioned kind of the, the collaboration that went into taking the imagery. Uh, the black star we showed before, the M87, that was released in 2019. This one, Sagittar A, they said this was more difficult to actually get an image of because, as you mentioned, the gas around it is moving so much faster. That's right. So that that's one uh, important aspect. It's smaller. The gas is moving faster around it. And to create that image, as we mentioned, we have to combine light from telescopes across the planet. And it's measuring those light at different times and then synchronizing those images. But because the material around it is moving very fast, you're seeing a slightly different image at each one of those individual telescopes across the planet. So it gets a little bit blurred. There's also the complication that we're looking at something in the center of our own galaxy, which is sort of like trying to see you know, a, a traffic light downtown while standing out in the suburbs. There's a lot of stuff in the way. And so that makes it uh, also much more challenging. So we've got this photo. What's next? Well, 
the <laughs> what's next for black holes is we're continuing to uh, learn about them through the uh, LIGO and other gravitational wave observatories, which see black holes collide and literally produce ripples in space time. Uh, I do not know if there is the opportunity to image another uh, black hole event horizon like we see here with this collaboration without going to something, a telescope that's literally larger than the planet Earth, which means having telescopes in space combining with telescopes on the planet to create an even larger telescope. It is so hard. The, the expanse of space, the expanse of the technology and, and where we are, it, it blows my mind that we're just scratching the surface of it. And it is fascinating. And something else we want to talk about, Dr. Colwell, is uh, we're starting to get some initial images from the James Webb um, Space Telescope that's out there. And, and we showed some images a while ago. We want to put some of those uh, up there because... We've got some images from space from, from, from years ago from a different telescope that's now been retired on the left-hand side of your screen. The images on the right-hand side of your, of your screen we were showing there are crystal clear. Talk about the, uh, this six-month commissioning period of the telescope and what we're starting to see from it. These are truly astounding images, and I'm, I'm very, very excited to see what's in store uh, because unlike the Event Horizon Telescope, which had this single target of the black hole at the center of the galaxy, the James Webb Space Telescope is gonna be able to survey the entire cosmos. And as you showed in those images, the increase in resolution, the precision of these images is truly astounding. It's, I think, surpassing the, uh, the, the team's uh, highest expectations. This telescope is able to look to the very early times of the universe. It looks in colors of light, infrared, where we're able to look at light from galaxies just a few hundred million years after the Big Bang. So we're seeing the very early stages of the universe. Uh, and um, I, I think the discoveries are gonna be uh, uh, truly astounding with this telescope. And we're just starting to watch this. And again, it's still in its six month commissioning period. So we've got a lot, a lot of tests still to run on it before it is officially uh, doing its best work. Dr. Josh Colwell, thanks for your time and I uh, hope everyone down at UCF is doing well. And we, we appreciate your insight into what we're looking at in space. Thank you, always a pleasure.